What is going on guys? So you decided to join the Army Reserves. In this video, I'm going to talk to you guys about what drill is like after basic training and AIT. So if you're wondering why I'm wearing my uniform, I don't normally wear my uniform in my videos because <clears throat> I don't want to be too much of a showy like, hey, look at me, I'm in the military and kind of like a clickbaity thing or I don't even know. Um, but I just got back from drill. Um, this weekend I had drill and I realized I was like, I haven't made a video talking about what drill is like after basic training yet, so I'm gonna make that video right now. If any of you guys are coming from my previous videos, so you decided to join the Army, what is drill like before basic training? You might know that when I went there, it was um, a couple of weeks before I left for basic training. It was almost two years ago to the day, because I think it was like May 3rd of 2015 when I went to my first drill before basic training and I was in my civilian clothes and I talked all about that and I was a little bit confused because I really didn't do much the, the unit wasn't really doing too much that weekend and I was kind of confused because I was like on my phone the whole time and I was like is this what it's gonna be like after basic training do I do I really not do anything so um, that was my computer but anyway so in this video I'm gonna tell you guys kind of what uh, goes on at drill after basic training. Now, this is not the National Guard, so if any of you guys are like, you know, what's the National Guard drills like, the monthly drills like, apparently it's fairly different than my experience. Um, so, this is for the Army Reserves, the United States Army Reserve, or USAR for short, the acronym, right? So, what we do. So, the in the mornings, the time we, I've been going to drill for about a year and a half now, and I'd say the average time that we get to drill, the sign in formation either starts at 6.30 or 7 o'clock. So it kind of just depends. Um, sometimes we've had sign in formation at 7.30 actually at the latest, but that's not too often. So you can generally um, figure that you're going to get there around 6.30 to 7 o'clock depending on when your company is doing their formation. And it also depends on if your company is doing PT in the morning. So again guys this is the military it is not the same universally across the board it just depends on your commander but in my case that's the times we get there um, now as far as what we do that varies almost every single drill uh, we really don't do the same thing every drill aside for just going to the same place there's no set thing like we go to formation we have our little morning formation where our first sergeant will brief us all and tell us you know what we need to get done for the, for the day whether it's like these online trainings that we have to do or some other trainings learning some things so for example today this morning we actually did a PT test so every six months you do a PT test this morning uh, we did a PT test and side note I got a 101 push-ups uh, I did 101 push-ups I did 88 sit-ups and I did my two mile run in 12 minutes and 36 seconds, which I'm not trying to say that to brag, but I also want to say that so you guys know whenever I give you physical fitness advice, I'm not um, some below average person um, trying to just, you know, spout information that I haven't used myself. All those tips that I gave you on how to physically prepare for basic training, I do that myself. And as you can see, it kind of works out. And I'm trying to get my run back down even lower my personal record is 1143 so I'm shooting for getting that by the end of May getting closer to the 12 flat mark so my extended scale score is 338 in case any of you guys are wondering the max that they actually put on paper in the military is 300 so um, by the military standard I got a 300 by everybody else they always ask you once you get over a 300 they say what's your extended scale score my extended scale score is 338 so it's pretty good um, so anyways, we did our PT score or our PT test and then we went to lunch because that kind of just takes up the whole morning. You do your PT, then you do personal hygiene, take a shower and all that stuff. Now that's a once every six months thing. Other times we have our morning formation and then there's training that goes on, um, PowerPoint presentations or different briefings, a sharp briefing. Um, if it's winter time, it could be like a cold weather briefing. Uh, so today we did kind of like a, a weapons briefing safety brief. So we did like a weapon safety briefing because next month we're going to do basically like a four day drill weekend. Uh, one of those days we're going to be going to the range and shooting. So we did 
a little bit of practice and more familiarization with the weapons because some people in the reserves don't really mess with weapons all that much they're not as familiar as they were back whenever they were in basic training like 10 years prior they may have forgot some things so going over all this stuff again um, really helped people so we did that we also did a calling in a nine line medevac um, training session so we did that today so some of the things that you guys can expect when you go to your reserve training drills is not a whole lot as far as difficulty when you go to basic and AIT you go to drill after that if you're in the reserves you're really gonna be kind of you know sideswiped and like really like kind of like what the heck is going on because there isn't that much going on or there usually isn't going to be as much as you think now some weekends you could be doing a whole lot of stuff you could have a whole lot of things to, uh, to do you could have your battalion commander or brigade commander just some just special events that happen every now and then and since there's only 12 drills a year you have a lot of trainings and things to do so a big bulk of this is just knocking out those trainings that active duty people do generally every week and if you're in the reserves and I assume the National Guard honestly is you just knock out these trainings every month and that usually takes up at least half of the day on one of your drill days so that's how that is now as far as what I do personally and if I did my job I was if you guys notice this is a, a dot it's not an official rank whenever you look it up if you didn't know I am now a cadet which is kind of like a in-between rank between enlisted and officer so you call me sir but I'm not necessarily an officer yet so it's really confusing so don't let that distract you if some of you guys are wondering why this is a dot um, I could also wear let me get this I could also wear this which is a sergeant rank so anyways that was a sidetrack the bottom line that I want to get across here for you guys is that if you watched my last video of how drill was like before basic training I think I've talked a lot more in depth about it but the thing is is it's not that difficult right that's one of the reasons I really like the reserves because it allows me to have my civilian job which is like programming and do all these other things as well as be in the military and do my extra training and, and volunteering for things so that's something that I really like about the reserves now you do have some things to do at home during the month if you're needed a com needing to complete some online training or want to do some other things so that's kind of how that works but it's not that bad so you can expect on your drill weekends after training to do some online training to do some little classroom briefing training and you know some weapon familiarizations you might practice your warrior tasks and battle drills and little things like that so on your drill weekends you're basically just trying to familiarize yourself back with other things that you learned in basic training as well as some other things that you might pick up along the way. So as a 25 Bravo, one of the things I did last year was I set up a VSAT, which is basically a satellite on the ground and I you know, set up the radio and I had internet and did all that stuff. So it was really cool. And those things happen every now and then. There's a lot of cool things that you get to do, but it's not like Basic, tra basic training at all. The other thing that's pretty big is it's a lot more laid back as far as whenever you're talking to people. So like let's say I'm, an, I'm a lower enlisted person, so E1 to E4, and I'm talking to a sergeant or a staff sergeant or maybe even a sergeant first class. It's a lot more laid back, you know. You, you should always go to parade rest if you're lower enlisted whenever you talk to an upper enlisted person and 99.9% .9 of the time they're just gonna be like you know don't worry about it the other big thing is you become friends with all of these people and a lot of times you just don't even go to parade rest because they're just like your buddy so you're an E4 they're an E5 they're your buddy and you just you know don't think about that as much as you did whenever you're at AIT and, and basic training whenever it's just pounded into your head so that's a really big thing and the other thing is just that the whole atmosphere as a whole you it's still the military but I know it's kind of like this on the active duty side it's just a lot more laid back as far as um, let's say for example the just just a sergeant walks into a room with some lower enlisted and they don't like let's say an e5 
walks into a room with a bunch of E2, Z3, Z4s and below. You know, at basic and AI team, you're told to call at ease for that, for that NCO. Well, in the regular army is what I've been told and in the reserves, you don't. You really only call at ease for like sergeant majors, sometimes first sergeants and stuff like that. Um, so that's kind of another shift that I didn't realize switching over from my training to the reserves. That's pretty much all I want to talk to you guys about in this video about how our drill is like after basic training. It's not too complicated. I think you guys will enjoy it if you are in the reserves. But what I do want to talk about for a future video, just as a heads up for you guys, is my rank and how my rank has changed. And eventually next year, how I will tell you guys how being an officer is like. Because previously, I was an enlisted person. I've gone from private first class to specialist. And now I am a cadet, which is like a middle ground between enlisted and officer. So my buddies that were specialists and private first classes and stuff like that, they now have to call me sir, which may not seem like a big deal to you guys before you join the military, but to me, it's just like the weirdest thing in the world being called sir right now. I'm not quite used to it yet. Um, some of my friends now, they, they say it jokingly, but then whenever I go around to other people uh, from different units and they see my rank, you know, they say good afternoon, sir, good morning, sir, and it's just really weird. So I do wanna talk about that transition and how drill and everything has changed from being a lower enlisted soldier to now a cadet and then eventually next year I will talk about how it's like as an officer so I can really give you guys a full spectrum on almost from the bottom to the top of what the military is like so if that sounds interesting to you guys you should probably hit the subscribe button if you're wanting to join the military and you want to know more you should probably hit the subscribe button or check out my playlist down in the description or at the end of this video so, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys later. Try.